Okay, let's have a look. Now that we've filled in your sources, we will evaluate their quality. Now, we've been doing that indirectly anyway before choosing them. Remember I told you to check that there is actually a date and that it's by a reliable source. It's not just a blog or something. So now we're just going to prove that the information that we've gotten is actually of good quality. So we're on page 16 and we're going to assess the quality of the information. Now quality of information is assessed by five criteria, authority, currency, accuracy, objectivity and coverage. You'll see they have an explanation of what each criteria means as well as an example of the kind of motivation you would then type in there. Now these are quite complicated concepts and even though the information is here on how to do it, I know that um, students generally find it difficult to consistently give the right motivation or the right explanation. Now, the reason it's extremely important for your motivation to be consistent is just have a look at the marking sheet. The marking sheet states these aspects, authority, currency, etc. needs to be correct for all the sources before you can get the mark. So the best way of doing this is to actually do the authority for all the sources, then move on to the currency for all the sources, etc. So let's start. First up, we're going to do authority and let's start with this source, the video. So you'll be working in this section over here. This should all be filled in by now. You should have your bibliographical information and now we're going to complete the quality of information. So let's start with authority. So authority is all about the validity or the credentials of the publisher or the author. It's basically saying why you should or why you can believe this information, that it's a reliable person who wrote it or institution who published it. So let's see, what is this presenter, Charles C. Mann, what is his background about the speaker? There you go. He's a science journalist. Okay, there's not really much more information. Well, let's see, often the name of the author is clickable and then you can actually see why this person is actually an authority on the topic. So here it says that he is the author of some... I think, I don't know if those are books or talks, you can find out a bit about that. But there's his website, let's have a look at that. What you need to do is to provide his credentials. Did he study this area? Why is he actually a specialist? Oh no, okay, that domain doesn't work. Let's see, I often like reading about TED, or like the organization and motivating that the organization is actually reliable. So, there you go. That's a very nice information. Okay, so you can basically go copy this and rephrase it. You can simplify it as well. You can just go, you can just say something like uh, Charles C. Mann is a respected uh, science journalist who was featured on TED. Uh, TED is a non-profit organization that spreads ideas in the form of short powerful talks. Let's have a look at some of the other sites that we have and how we would motivate that. Okay, Britannica Encyclopedia and there's the author, Stuart Alpham. So I'm going to click on the author and see who he is. There's literally his credentials saying he's a, I don't even know what that means, Doris Duke professor. But anyway, he's a professor of conservation ecology. Um, he probably studied or taught at all of those uh, universities. I would actually copy that and insert that as a literal quote. Copy and paste as plain text. Now, I would actually list it like that. That's a bit difficult to rephrase. All right, so there you've proven that he's actually authoritative and the organization is obviously extremely reliable. It's an actual respected encyclopedia. Something like News 24. You can see if you can find information on the author. In this instance, the author does not have a link. So this is the kind of site where I need to prove that News24 is a reliable news site. So this is the perfect place where I'll actually go and look for about, let's see, 24.com. I'm going to go to contact us and see. No, there's nothing in there. 
okay doesn't seem to have an about us page let's see the Facebook site let's see see all that's a nice one so just check that it's not a comment you often find on the news 24 it'll say this is a blog or a comment of a contributor and it's not actually the view of news 24 itself then that's maybe not so good this is this is a good article they didn't say that it's something posted by news 24 so he's obviously a journalist for them i see here he's got a twitter page so let's quickly open that and see no he doesn't have much information on there about what he does yeah, just says he work like he links to News Twenty Four. No, okay. So I would say something like Duncan Alfred uh, is a journalist for News Twenty Four, that is South Africa's largest news website. Yeah, that is South Africa's largest news website. That's fine. I think that's enough. That's the authority that I would provide. Next up, we're doing currency. The date on which the material was published or updated. The example says the article was originally published in a specific date, but then is, was updated recently. On this article, it was written in 2018, 29th of October. So I would say up to date with that date as the proof. For an article like the encyclopedia one, it's really lovely they actually have an article history this is not very common it'll only be on really respected sites like this so here you can say just like the example that the article was originally posted in 2007 but has continually been updated to include the latest information with the latest update being on august 9th 2018 for a video, you would post the date on which the video was published or delivered. So April 2018 is fine, so you can just say it's up to date, was delivered in April 2018. Now the only time when you would really provide a different take on that would be if it's an older document. Let's see how old this training manual is, 2017. So I would say something like posted in or published in 2017 information is still up to date so if it's a specifically old source something like 2010 or something you would have to provide information of why you still trust it so if it actually speaks about the latest developments then it's not a worthy source then it's too outdated but if it just states what it what it is so let's say it defines what deforestation means then it's a suitable article because that hasn't changed it still means the same thing so then you would provide a motivation that says even though it was posted in 2014 all information is still relevant as this merely provides a definition hopefully you don't have any sources that does not have a date if you have one you have to find a date on the website itself see if you have a copyright date or something see there's a copyright date that's okay so then I would say, uh, even though there's no specific date on the article, the website is continually updated and the information is still in keeping with the current developments, something like that. Accuracy is usually the one most people struggle with a bit. It has to do with whether it corresponds with information from other reliable sources. So basically what that means is, if you hear some other controversial story about a quotation that our president made, you would only trust it if you see it on a second and a third reliable news website. If it's just one organization that isn't that reliable that's posting it, then you would not trust it. So let's look at an example. The information provided corresponds with other sources and is also accurate in terms of providing recent prices. This is difficult to assess, but you can motivate it that from all of the sources that you've consulted, this source seems, or you can say something like this source is consistent with the information that was available on various reliable sources on the topic. And ideally, you can refer to another source that you've looked at, even though you're not using it as a source. 
What I like doing is to find a specific fact, like numbers or something, to then reverse search and see if I can find on other sites. Okay, so here it says, at least 2 million square kilometer miles of such forest has been cleared for grazing lands. So let's say forests cleared for grazing lands and see if we can find other sites that says how many million square kilometers. If you're doing professional research, you'll have to do this a little bit more in depth and actually go and read the articles in its totality. But in this case, we're just practicing this basic principle. So something like this, I think, is sufficient. It speaks about the forests that have been cleared um, and how much it's been expanded. So I'm going to right click, copy this link address and then say And then I'll actually hyperlink this to that specific site. Objectivity is also a little bit of a tricky one. It's basically examining the article for prejudice, bias or skewing information. Now this would be quite easy to spot if you're reading a blog that uses quite inflammatory language and doesn't provide a balanced view. So they'll just sort of state one side of the story. Just as an example, I won't trust a review of a cell phone on the manufacturer's page. So if LG releases a cell phone and they provide a review of it on their own website or it's sponsored by them, then I'm not going to trust that review as much. It doesn't have objective facts and it doesn't state the pros and the cons. It's all about having balance. So the example says there is no bias on the web page and the information presented is in a factual objective fashion. Now you can't use the same sentences for every single source. So you have to be a little bit creative in how you phrase it. By this time you should have read quite a bit of the source. Do they provide a one-sided view or do they provide a balanced view on more than one aspect. That's the kind of words you can use for motivating that it's an objective site. But generally, if you have a reliable site, it will be objective anyway. I think something like a video is most likely to not be quite objective, which is not good. So maybe watch the video or read through the transcript before you choose to use it. And then it would be worth it saying that even though the author provides uh, shocking facts, he also provides solutions backed up by research. So he's basically not trying to convince the listener or the reader of anything. He provides a view where the reader can make their own informed choice at the end. So that will be the same for all of these. You basically have to read the article and provide motivation that they have written this article with balanced views, not trying to skew the information, not trying to convince the reader of anything, simply providing all the facts, making good arguments, but not making up the mind of the reader for them. You'll often see that fake news sites does not do this. They just provide a one-sided view of a topic. They use very inflammatory language, uh, passionate language as well. It's not necessarily always uh, bad information, but they usually provide a very one-sided view that's not very balanced, that actively tries to convince the reader or the listener of their point of view. And a reliable site would not do that. Lastly, you make a comment about the coverage. It's not just how extensively the material covers the topic, you also have to prove why you say it's extensive or specific. It doesn't have to be extensive to be a good source. So the kind of things you would say would be that the article provides extensive coverage 
on a wide variety of transport systems used in cities around the world. That's an example. So you have to be quite specific about what it actually covers. Something that's very nice to use for that are the headings. You could say for this kind of article, um, it provides substantial information on renewable energy, MES postponements, as well as the powerful coal-fired plants. If there aren't headings, then you need to go and read through the article and identify two or three basic topics. So this deforestation one is very easy. Uh, you would say that this is a, an extensive article that has the full history about deforestation as well as the effects of it and they also look at the modern deforestation. It's basically saying what the source is about and how much they cover of it. So if you have a specific source that only offers solutions, that's fine. Then you just say uh, this source focuses specifically on the solutions for plastic pollution. Just specify what the source is about. <music>